Okay, uh, it says let g of x, so this is, uh, uh, this is number six on your, um, for your free response. So this is the fourth free response we've done. It says g of x is equal to four times x plus one to the negative two thirds, and f is actually equal to um, the integral from zero to x of g of t uh, dt. And we're going for x values greater than or equal to zero, so we're only looking at positive values. So first it finds uh, f of 26. So that's our that's our first goal. Okay. So I saw some people do this yesterday, and and, and they got it correct, which was which was great to see. So all I'm doing is I'm just plugging in. I'm going zero to 26 of this function. So four times x plus one to the negative two thirds uh, dx. That's what I'm trying to determine there. So we need to find an antiderivative, right? And the antiderivative in this situation is 12 times x plus 1 raised to the 1 third power. Evaluate 26 and 0. Were you able to come up with the 12 x plus 1 to the 1 third? Okay, got a yes there. Do you need help seeing how I did it? Okay, so if you set this up, say 4. I'm sorry, say that like u is equal to x plus 1. So suppose I were to use substitution. See how u is equal to x plus 1? Uh, see how du is just dx? So that means that I don't need to do a substitution process because du is dx. So you could just take the antiderivative. So I raise the exponent by 1. If you add 1 to negative 2 thirds, you get 1 third. And if you divide by 1 third, that's the same as multiplying by 3, so you get the 12. So there's our antiderivative. And now we just evaluate. We plug in 26. 26 plus 1 is 27. 27 to the 1 third power is 3. And 3 times 12 is 36. This is what gets you. Sometimes you plug in the 0 and you're like, oh, I'm just going to get 0. Do you get 0? No, you don't. 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 to the 1 third is 1 times 12 is 12. <laughs> okay. So uh, you get 24. We get 24. Yay, 24. Everybody get 24? I did that totally. All right. So then the second part is, um, it says, uh, determine the concavity, concavity for f of x, for x greater than 0, and justify your answer. So notice that f of x is equal to, the integral from 0 to x of 4 times x plus 1 to the negative 2 thirds dx. So, super important question, and this is something that you'll use as you move forward. Tell me anything about concavity, somebody. F double prime. Good. So you're looking for F double prime. Let's first consider F prime. What happens if I take the derivative of this guy? What happens if you take the derivative of that? That goes away, right? So f prime is 4 times x plus 1 to the negative 2 thirds power. Good. So f double prime, I have to take the derivative of that, right? What do you use to take the derivative of that? Chain rule. Good. Yep. 4u to the negative 2 thirds. And then I have x plus 1, derivative is 1. And derivative here, I've got negative 8 over 3, uh, u to the 5 thirds power in the denominator. So f double prime, we've got negative 8 over 3 times x plus 1 to the 5 thirds power. That's my derivative. Everybody good with that? So I want you to consider, suppose that we plug in positive values for for x, what is the bottom going to be, positive or negative? Positive. The bottom's positive. What about the top? So it turns out that the second derivative is always negative if the x values are positive. So the concavity for positive x values will be concave down. Concave down. Because f double prime is always negative. 
my guess is that they want you uh, to show an indication that this will be positive, that that's negative. They want you to find F double prime and make a statement about concavity being F double prime negative. We'll check the answer key here in a second. That was part B, wasn't it? We just have one left? Okay. Last one. Uh, this was the tough one, wasn't it? Yep. So this one was tough. Let H be equal to X minus F of X. Uh, find minimum for H from 0 uh, from uh, 0 to 26. So uh, when does a minimum occur, Mr. Raiden? When H prime changes from negative to positive. So we are going to look So we're going to look for H prime to change, negative to positive. OK, uh, I'm going to write out H. H is equal to x minus the integral from 0 to x of 4 times t plus 1 to the negative 1 third dt. That's my function. So I'm going to look at the derivative. So h prime, h prime is equal to, I now need to take the derivative of that. What's the derivative of x? 1. Minus, what happens if you take the derivative of this guy? Let's go away. I get 4 times t plus 1 to the negative 1 third power. I don't know. Is it? Yeah, two-thirds, sorry. Okay, thank you. All right, so that's my equation. Uh, so if I'm going to look for a change sign, I'll set it equal to zero. So zero equals one minus, um, I'm going to raise four over t plus one to the two-thirds power. Uh, I'll move that to the other side. So four over t plus one to the two-thirds power is equal to 1 over 1. How do you solve that? Cross multiply. t plus 1 to the 2 thirds power is equal to 4. Does anybody know how to get rid of a 2 thirds exponent? Raise it to the 3 halves. Very good. So we're going to raise it to the 3 halves. So I get t plus 1 is equal to what is 4 cubed? 64 square root. 8. I subtract 1, I get t is equal to 7. So, what we need to do is we need to consider certain values. We got t, okay, we're going to consider 0, 7, and 26. Why am I considering 0 and 26? Yeah, those are the endpoints, right? When it says find the overall minimum or maximum, we need to consider the endpoints as well. It says h of x is equal to this guy right there. So I'm going to go x minus f of x. So if I plug in 0, I get 0 minus, let's look back at my function f. Where is it? If we go 0 to 0 on an integral, what do you get? 0. So good. We've got this value being 0 as well. Oh, I've got the function right there. Okay, I'll rewrite it. We're almost done. Hang in there. Again, h was equal to x minus the integral from 0 to x of 4 times t plus 1 uh, dt raised to the negative 2 thirds power. Okay. So now we're going to plug in 7. So if you plug in 7, you get 7 minus the area from 0 to 7. Now, we've already found the antiderivative once, haven't we? I mean, isn't that how we came up with that great number of 24? You came up with 24? 
right? So how would it be different is instead of plugging in 26, what if you plugged in 7? So we're going to plug in 7. What would you get here? 7 plus 1 is 8. 8 to the 1 third is 2 times 12 is 24. And if you plug in 0, we get 12. So we went back, we typed in 7, we got 12. That gave me negative 5. And then we already calculated at 26, didn't we? So you have x is 26 minus, and then what did you get when you plugged in 26? 24. And you can see you get 2. So negative 5 is the minimum. Okay, here we are. Uh, you can uh, calculate your score. So part A, if you came up with the right antiderivative, which was that 12 times x plus 1 to the 1 third power, if you came up with 12 times x plus 1 to the 1 third power, you get two points for that. And if you came up with the 24, then you get a point for that as well. So you get three points on that first one. I know that that was uh, challenging. Um, if you got the derivative of f, to be 4 times x plus 1 to the negative 2 thirds power. If, if you wrote that the derivative of f was simply g, which was that, 4 times x plus 1 to the negative 2 thirds power, you didn't even need to take the derivative of that, you get a point. And then notice we said in order to get the second derivative, you'd have to take the derivative of that. We got negative 8 over 3 times x plus 1 to the 5 thirds. You get another point for that. And then uh, it says it's concave down. And all they say is that it's concave, or that f double prime is less than zero when x is greater than zero. That's the only justification they did. We went through a little bit more. You get a point for that. So a total of six there. Um, if you took h prime of x and set it equal to zero, so if you got h prime of x to be one minus four times x plus one to the negative two thirds power, um, and set that equal to zero, you get a point. If you came up with 7 as a candidate to test, you get a point. And if you came up with negative 5 as the minimum and you set up the chart like I did, then you're going to get a point as well. How do we do? This is a tough one. Two or higher? Okay, got a couple points. Uh, he told